Hello students, I hope you all are doing well. Welcome back to the video of science for grade 8. So we are taking today for unit 2, living thing in their environments. So this chapter is regarding various living organisms like plants, animals and different other populations. How do they survive or adapt in their environment and what are the factors they need for that. So about that we'll be learning. Now for the first topic we have is plant adaptations. Before I go to the plant adaptation topic, I want you to know about habitat. You might have heard this word before, habitat. Habitat is the environment where plant or animal or any living organism grows or they stay. That is the environment or surrounding for them. That is what we call habitat. Now, different have, there are varieties types of habitat when we talk about. For example, if it's a very cold area like snowy and all, its habitat would be different. And if it's summer and a little bit hot or warmer areas like Dimapur, its habitat is different. Now, since surrounding is different, every plant and organi organisms living in there also starts to show the changes in their behavior so that they can live in that environment. That is what we call adaptation. Adaptation. So I hope you are clear that adaptation means for any organisms or plants in order to grow in that habitat whatever certain changes. If animal there might be a few changes in their body structure and all plant there might be changes in structure or the way they intake of the nutrients and all there may be changes so those changes brought in them due to environment and surrounding for them to grow we call it adaptations now similarly plant also adapt in the various environment for plant adaptation i have brought you three examples here today you know spruce trees spruce trees uh, they usually grow in snowy areas so in snowy area when the snow is very thick and they're in solid form, it's very difficult for those trees to absorb water or nutrients from the soil. So in that case, in order to absorb the water, what they do is they have a very thin, their leaves are very thin and strong needle type of leaf and with a very thick waxy kind of covering. I have shown in the video right now the picture of it. So how does it help? That is the adaptation happen in the plant or the spruce trees living in the snowy areas because it prevents the loss of the water. Those kind of leaves, whatever changes is there, it helps to absorb the water in it so that because from the ground they cannot absorb the water. So through the leaf they help to absorb the water in it. Now those kind of, leaf, kind of leaves you cannot see in other areas like for example Dimapur, you cannot see it because it happens to adapt itself. Plant happens to adapt itself and grow in those habitat as per its survival needs. So spruce trees have that kind of survival adaptations. Similarly, another example I'll give it to you is strangler figs. Here I have shown the example. You know rainforest. Rainforest is very best place or area for plants to grow because it has all the nutrients it needs from the ground and even it gets enough of sunlight, it's a warm, so for plant, whatever is required for its growth, for germination, it is there. Which have, about germination, you have learned in chapter one. So, rainforest is very good, but then in those kind of forest, problem is if the plants are smaller, if, in the, if they are in the uh, ground level area, then they cannot absorb sunlight because there are very huge trees which block the sunlight from reaching to the ground because they absorb the sunlight. So what happens is straggler feet adapt themselves to get germinated in the trees. Those big trees in there itself, it get germinated, get all the nutrients from it and start to grow on it not on the soil. So when they are growing on it, they happen to absorb the sunlight and germination process happens faster and they grow stronger. Now, it so happens that when it starts to grow very strong, it engulfs that particular tree by itself. And the thing is, main tree will die, but that it will not hamper the strangler fig 
because it is so strong that it will slowly start to grow down the root or down the soil also. So that is now adaptation done by strangler feed. You know the word is there, survival of the fittest. Like that plant also has started to show the adaptation in various environment for it to grow, for it to adapt in that environment and for it to survive. Similarly, now another example we have is wheat, W-E-E-T, wheat. Now, wheat is the plant, small plants that uh, comes up everywhere where it is not required. That Those plants we call it weeds. For example, farmers, when they are gro growing crops and all, in the down one, weeds will start to grow. So those weeds, farmers do not need it. They need the crops. Then we call those plants wheat. Now those plants also start growing in the areas where farmer will be applying fertilizers and all. They'll start intaking those fertilizer and start growing up among the uh, plants where it is not required. So weeds usually farmer, what do they do? Since it is not required, they put on pesticides and all or they keep uh, keep on throwing those weeds out in order to just grow for to grow. So, but Remember, wheat also has adapted itself among the uh, by germinating by growing in the areas where the crops are growing. So they can take or intake the nutrients from it or fertilizer, uh, the, whatever the farmers have kept in there. It will try to intake it and then grow. So that is also a kind of survival done by weeds. So here, right now, I have told you three examples of plant adaptation how spruce trees grows in the snowy area and still manages to get uh, sunlight or photosynthesis or even get the uh, required water from the leaf and similarly strangler fig tree it happens to uh, adapt itself by growing on the trees and similarly weeds also how it's adapt among the other crops areas so these are few example of plant adaptations now we will go for animal adaptations so we have now animal adaptations like plant adapt in various environment I, have, I will be giving you a few example how animal also adapt if there is a, you know survival uh, difficulties for any animals to grow in their habitat they will start showing various type of differences in their body structure or habits in order to go in that habitat for example Arabian oryx. Arabian oryx lives in desert area. In desert area, you know that water is very less, first thing. And there are sands. There is a sand. So sand, it's very difficult to walk also. So how does Arabian oryx helps to overcome that difficulty is? Arabian oryx will try to drink lots of water at a go. They can live without drinking water for a month also. Because when they are drinking a water at a time, they will drink enough water and at night. Why at night? Because during the daytime if they drink, evaporation happens and then water gets away from their body. So at night they drink and during the daytime they always try to hide in the shady area so that water, whatever they have consumed may not be evaporated because in desert area they do not get enough of water. Now similarly, in the uh, pressure chapter, in previous video, I have taught you about uh, why the camel have flat foot, uh, uh, why it's important. Because if the flat uh, foots are flat, then they are covering more areas. Because of that, pressure would be less in the ground and it would be easy to walk. Like that, Arabian oryx also has adapted its hooves by having a large area. Their hooves or the feet has larger area because of that. Since area is more pressure will be less applied in the ground so they can walk easily without getting dipped inside the sand. So this kind of adaptation is shown by uh, or Arabian oryx because of the habitat needs, because of their survival instinct. Similarly, another we have sea lion. Sea lion, I'm even showing the picture in here. Sea lion, it's a mammal and they live in the sea. And usually, what adaptation they have done is they have a very streamlined body, smooth body to overcome the friction. Friction is whenever something is being rubbed against for a long time, heat is produced. That is what we call it friction. Now, in order to overcome that, sea mammal 
they have a very smooth line body and a streamlined body and a very smooth body so that is also one kind of adaptation and similarly they have a flipper flipper is like here in the picture you can see in the back two kind of lines out there so those kind of flippers help the sea lion to move forward in the sea and dive deeper and deeper and again another adaptation done by them is their nostril whenever the sea lion dive inside the sea water its nostril get blocked why so that air may not enter inside lungs and feel it so why it happens because they have to adapt if they keep on uh, opening their nose for a long time then water when it enter inside lungs will be filled they, may, they might die so for that reason in order to catch their prey until the time they are inside the sea they can adapt to close their nose and stay for longer time without taking the oxygen from outside land so that is also a kind of adaptation done by sea mammals or sea lions next we have earthworm earthworm it's an invertebrate invertebrates means uh, the animals without the backbone without the bones in their back we call them invertebrates so earthworm comes under the invertebrates of the group annelida so earthworm uh, the adaptation they have done is in their under side ways they have a very uh, you know bristle tiny bristle kind of uh, structure form which we call Cassie and that cassie helps the particular earthworm to grip the site because they live in the burrow in inside the hole in that particular ground so that helps to grip that particular burrow so that if predator enter inside to pluck it out it may not go outside it will help it to grip and stay inside that is the survival instinct or the adaptation done by the earthworm to survive itself in that habitat so these are a few examples of your animal, how do they adapt in that, or, uh, in that particular habitat to overcome the difficulties or so that they may not be killed by the other prey of theirs. So this is how plant and ad animals adapt themselves in the environment. So like that, once the plant and animal have adapted, another topic will come, ecology. So what is ecology? Basically, how the living organism like plants and animals, they adapt in their uh, environment and how do they depend on one another in that environment to grow. We call it ecology. And ecology, that stud study, we call it ecology. And, and the people who are scientists who do the experiment and researches under the ecology or under for the animal and plants, in order to how they are growing in that or, uh, areas that we call it ecologist those are the people who do the studies of plant and animals in that particular surrounding and how they are adapting in that or uh, in that particular uh, environment they do the stu study or research for that now in your book one example is given uh, investigate they have certain group of scientists or ecologists they have investigated the camel grazing in dubai so basically they saw that in dubai area in that particular reason that the plants were reducing in number so they thought might be since the camel is grazing for the longer time might be camel is the main uh, animal that is in taking all the plants so they wanted to be very sure regarding that so what they did is they investigated because that is the work of ecologists. They try to investigate, make out the data, analysis, they do the sampling and then find it out the reason why it is happening. So what they did was in Dubai Reserve, uh, Desert Conver Conservation Reserve, there they made a big plot. In that plot, they divided two different, uh, in that one big plot, they divided in half. They gave one area for the camels only and the other area for the oryx or gazelles other animals available in that particular desert area and then they put the, they counted how many different types of plants were there species of plants were there they all did the data calculation and sampling and then in the end whatever plants and animals were later found or remaining were there they calculated so from there the mean plant consumed or grazed by camel and the oryx was found out so the table came up like this mean plants per lot 
the camel degrees were 64 and the oryx or the gazelle degrees were 87. And the spaces of plant in the camel area, there were only four. And that in the oryx or gazelle, wherever they were grazing, were five. So quite the different than expectation. The scientists or the ecologists were expecting that the mind will Camels were intaking more of those uh, plants, that's why number of plants were decreasing. But in the end, after the study or the, after the research, they found out that it was not the camel because in the area of the camel, only 64 uh, per plants per plot were grazed. But whereas for the oryx and gazelles, they were grazing 87, quite a lot amount of plant in those areas. So this data, like that, the ecologist or they try to find out the data, how it is affecting the certain environment and they try to bring out the solution. Now, uh, how do they do this kind of study? By the sampling. So sampling is, if those ecologists would have done the whole the areas of the desert by counting each plants, each animals available in those areas, it would have been very difficult for them to do. So what they do is out of all the population, population is number of plants or number of uh, you know animals and all available in there, out of all they try to bring out a certain portion, certain area, certain natural habitat and from there they do the study and they convert it into the large area so they get the bigger picture about the sampling, about that particular area. So this kind of method we call it sampling and ecologists they do in order to find the various effect that is happening in environment, how to overcome it, what is the main culprit behind it. So in order to read these all uh, data or analysis, sampling is done. Now there is one more uh, example of sampling being done in your book. You can see a certain student a researcher doing sampling for the uh, living organism found in that river and all. So like that, even later when you grow up and ever if you feel like to be an ecologist in your future, then remember how to do sampling. Now from now onward also you can practice in your nature areas on all, wherever there is small plants or animal, if you have at home and all, try to analyze it, try to prepare a data. That is how the ecologists do it. So you can also practice it at home. Thirteen minutes is there. Lamba Jolas is Hello? Oh, Mamma. I'm going to start again. Now we have 2.4 food waves and energy flow. Now, what do we mean by food wave? In an environment, 
various types of plant, various types of animal, they adapt, they survive. So they do not survive on themselves. They always survive on another animal or plant in order to grow for themselves or in order to get the energy. So what happens is, let me give you one clear picture. For example, plant. Plant is grown. Plant would be eaten up by deer in the forest. And again, deer would be killed by tiger and they'll eat it up. And again, later tiger, when they die, uh, their body will be decomposed or their body will start to fade away in the ground and decomposer will start to eat it. And again, through it, plant will start to get energy from it. And again, plant is eaten up by deer. This process goes on. So what is happening basically? One, on the plant, animal is getting adapted. And on the plant, animal is getting energy. From the plant, animal is getting energy. And again, from one type of animal, another animal is getting energy. So they are eating up one another in order to grow in a cycle to form a balance, to depend upon one another. That is what we call food wave. Then, now, before starting food wave, phytoplankton, you have to remember this word, phytoplankton are the small microscopic plant. They are the plant, but you cannot see with your naked eyes. You have to use the microscope, then only you can see it. Similar, similarly, zooplankton are also microorganisms which needs microscope to see. You cannot see with your naked eyes. So what happens is, there is uh, in your book also one food wave is shown. I'll be showing different type of food wave in my uh, PPT also, which will be sent, which I'll be sending it to you. Uh, it is shown like this. Here is a phyt phytoplankton that is eaten up by zooplankton because it's an animal. And again, phytoplankton and zooplankton also can be eaten up by krill. You can see the krill. So that krill will be further eaten up by fish or squid also can eat it. And further, both the fish and squid both can be eaten up by seal. That's a leopard seal or by penguin. And again, that penguin would be further eaten up by leopard seal. And then that leopard seal or penguin, whatever is in the environment, will be further eaten up by killer whale. So what is happening? They are following a certain pattern. See, this arrow shows that this means phytoplankton is eaten up by krill. Arrow shows where the energy is flowing. Energy of phytoplankton has been gone to krill. But what happened is only 10% of energy will be taken up. For example, here... A uh, penguin is taking, eating up squid. So here, whatever the squid is having the energy, it's 10% only will go to penguin. For example, if a uh, squid has 100 joule energy, then penguin will just take 10 joule only from there, 10% of its energy. So this is how the energy flow in an one, one wave or one circle or one phase, which we call food wave or the energy flow in that same wave. So we call it flow of energy. So this particular structure you remember, but I'll be giving you a few questions to practice for different wave also. There will be many types of waves on in there. You have to understand which is the one particular wave from there and find out uh, what are the producers. Producers are plant, like for here phytoplankton is a producer because it can produce itself and consumers are one which is eating it. Here zooplankton is consumer of phytoplankton. Creel is consumer of zooplankton also or consumer of phytoplankton also. So pr producer and consumer that is the difference. Now go through it and try to practice some more question which I will be giving it to you in the PPT. Thank you.